Creating app connectors for Zscaler private access, application access. So I'm going to add an app connector and I'm going to create a new provisioning key. Um, it needs to be signed by an intermediate certificate trusted to the root um, and that root also issues certificates through an intermediate to the client. So I've got those certificates here. I'm going to select my connector intermediate. So I click next. I'm going to add a connector group and this time I'm going to call it Milton Keynes because that's where uh, we are. We're going to call it Milton Keynes Data Center. Um, and it's in Milton Keynes UK. So we'll geographically locate that there. And we'll click Next. We'll create a new provisioning key, MK uh, provisioning. And the number of times it can be reused. So how many connectors are going to be in the group, um, essentially, um, and making room for creations, deletions over time. If I'm going to auto scale up and auto scale down in AWS, for example, I need to be able to reuse that. I can increase or decrease this number later on. So I'm going to start with 10. I might need to lower it or I might need to increase it later on. So we'll click Next. We'll click Save. Um, and we have this provisioning key, which I'm going to copy to my clipboard. Um, so that's done. We can see the provisioning key here. Um, we see the app connector group that's being created, but no app connectors exist at the moment. So if I come across here, So if I come across and I open up a, an iTerminal window and we SSH onto my connector, um, I'll be prompted to authenticate. I'm going to sudo to root um, and I can cd to opt zscaler uh, var and in this folder I can see that there's um, no data already there. I need to systemctl status zpa connector make sure that the connector process isn't running, um, which it's not. So if I vi uh, provision underscore key, and I paste that provisioning key in there, uh, I can now start the ZPA connector process. Um, and what we'll see straight away, that provisioning key file has been deleted. Um, it's now been encrypted and, um, which will be reused if it needs to uh, re-enroll later on. Um, and then it enrolls um, and we'll see that it's now got um, the certificate for the um, connection, the chain all the way up to the root. We've got its private key um, that's used for authentication um, and uh, the, this private key that is associated with the public key. Um, and we now have connection um, to the cloud. So we can check that um, it's dedicated as a standalone unit and it's gone ahead and installed all the services that it needs. So if we come back over to App Connectors and click Refresh, we can see now that we've got the MK um, provisioning. Uh, it's in this um, data center group. Um, and so we can go ahead now and come across to Server Groups and I've got my DC Discovery server group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this. I'm going to add in my Milton Keynes data center. I can get rid of London because uh, that no longer exists. We can click Save. And it's now able to advertise those applications. So if I um, come across to my application segments, I've got my application segments defined here. Here's my wildcard and it's associated with that DC Discovery. I've got my domain controller as a specific segment associated with DC Discovery. So if I launch my um, Zscaler client, click open, you can see it's connected. And so um, I'm now treated as um, on the trusted network, but Zscaler client is tunneling all my traffic. So if I open up a new window and I could 
ping, for example, dc3 welshgeek.net is my domain controller. You can see it's resolving to this 164 synthetic IP address, um, but we can see that connection go through. It's connected to that synthetic IP address through the Zscaler private access um, platform. And we come into diagnostics and we can see that connection. Um, there's a number of connections that have gone through since I've created it. But it went through that MK provisioning key um, and we can see those connections from that user.